So one of the uh, often unspoken negatives when a fictional work that you enjoy is trying to do new or interesting things is that you just might not like some of those things they're doing, right? I mean, it's just not your thing. If you really like Star Trek and they make an entire episode about jazz and you don't like jazz, it doesn't matter if it's a well-done episode. You don't like jazz. It's the very reason for the coffee mentality. And I have to admit, I've never really liked how they've done the sisters in The Clone Wars. It's, it's even hard for me to properly explain why. They feel a little bit too much like traditional mages, and a lot less like force users. And I've always felt, of course, my own interpretation, we all know the force is super loosely defined, but I've always felt that there is a pretty big difference between force user and mage, and that the two really should be in separate categories. And, it, I don't know, it just it never really quite gelled with me. Despite that, we do see three, ver four very good things happening in this episode. Characterization, 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 and characterization. We're finally seeing some actual characterization for Dooku. Minute, but it is there. We're seeing some characterization for Palpatine, arguably the first characterization he's had in this entire series. We're seeing characterization for uh, Ventress, of course, who, despite being around since forever, is just now finally getting some development as a character. And finally, we're getting development and characterization for another character, whose name I've forgotten, which is why I'm looking it up really quick. I always think of her as the mother. Uh, mother Talzin. That's her name. Mother Talzin. Because Mother Talzin is... Mother Talzin is someone who, I do admit, despite my dislike of the sisters in general, I like her inclusion to the series. She feels similar to Palpatine if Palpatine was not interested in the same things. Palpatine is interest, obviously interested in control, power, taking over the galaxy, you know, establishing the new empire, blah, blah, blah. What she's after is a little less precisely defined. And you really get the impression that she is always playing every angle constantly against each other to the point where it's hard to tell if she's just very adaptable, you know, just kind of go with the flow. Or if this is always part of the plan. This episode's a good example of that. In our very first shot of this, did she always plan for this, you know, for, for Ventress's attack to fail? And thus had this ready to go? Or did she send Ventress out thinking that she might succeed, but if she failed, well, she's got a backup plan, right? A little more of speed chess and a little less tactical chess. Or, excuse me, strategic chess. So, more tactical, less strategic. Uh, uh, more strategic, less tactical, or more tactical, less strategic. It's one of the two. <laughs> I don't know. You get my point rather than having some big overarching plan just adapting as things change. This also, spoilers, sorry, but this also kind of applies because we know that he's, she's about to introduce Savage, who I know it's pronounced Savage, and I don't care. She's about to introduce Savage, and Savage is a direct link to Maul, and Maul is going to have some stuff to do in the future, too, so all of this feels like a lineup that she's kind of presented in this matter, specifically to get these events rolling into motion. But what she's actually after, well, that's a lot more debatable, isn't it? Anyway, so I find her to be an interesting character. The mother. I'm just going to call her mother from now because I've already forgotten her name. Talzin or something like that. Um, and it was nice to see. <laughs> they kind of dumped backstory on us with Ventress, but at least we did get to see backstory with her and why she is so filled with anger at basically everyone. We will see more development for her in the future, of course. It was also nice to see how Dooku manages, and one of the reasons... It, it was good to see... <sighs> Dooku has a strange sense of loyalty. Because the way I've always perceived this, and the show kind of bows, bails this out, and the, the movies kind of bail this out, there's two categories for Dooku. There's matters, and then there's everything else. Now, those that matter, he is truly loyal to, to the point where he will actually go to bat for them, right? He really legitimately cares about the either concepts or entities or whatever that he is actually loyal to. One of the things that one of the books showed was that he is still loyal to Yoda, for example, despite everything that's happened. But then there's everything else, which doesn't matter and can be discarded as if it doesn't matter because, you know, evil Sith, blah, blah, blah. So we see in this episode that he did actually give a damn about Ventress and was like, well, hang on. And the only reason he finally agrees to this is because he either is more loyal to Palpatine or, and I like this answer better, he's smart enough to recognize the trap. Dooku is in a position of tremendous power, but uh, Palpatine could make or break him instantly. 
Palpatine just has too much information, too much power, and too much influence over the system that supports Dooku. Dooku has the, 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 the CIS under his belt and a huge army and he's Jade powers and blah, blah, blah. But all of that could be taken away by Palpatine if he so chose. Palpatine basically constantly has the Sword of Damocles sitting right over Dooku's neck. So Dooku realizes, well, I have to play ball here if I want to keep my head attached. So, okay, fine, I will go ahead and do what you want. And, of course, what Palpatine did was actually quite brilliant in its own right. And Palpatine pretty much maneuvered both of his previous pawns into a position where no matter what they do, they will be pissed off more at each other than at him. Basically making them fight or, or squabble or hate amongst each other and focus all their attention on them. Well, he just gets to do his own thing off to the side. <laughs> and there's other reasons it's brilliant too, but I'm, this has already been going on too long, so we'll, we'll move on past that. But I still like that despite being poisoned and fighting people he couldn't quite see, Dooku still managed to beat the three of them. Because one of the things I've always liked about the idea of Dooku is that he really was good at everything. He was a good fighter, he was a good statesman, he was good with the Force, as in like the more mage-style aspects of the Force, you know, lightning and telekinesis and all that fun stuff, and sensing. So he's good at the Force, he's good at fighting, he's good at leading, he's good at being charismatic, he had, he had the kind of... Uh, particularly je ne, sais quoi, je ne sais quoi, excuse me, that led him to being this wonderful person. In fact, to be completely blunt, if Palpatine was not in the picture, I have no doubt that Dooku would have probably taken over either part of or a huge chunk of the galaxy because he was just so well positioned to do all of that. And he had the motive to do it despite Palpatine. Because remember, the thing that originally pushed him in this direction was because of his... his uh, losing faith in the Republic and in the Jedi. Anyways, I'm going on way too long. Uh, good episode, even though I hate the Night Sisters. Uh, next thing we'll see Savage introduced to the show, and we'll see where that goes next time.